everyone. So there was some interest in me attempting more dirndl trim designs that you might use along the neckline for embellishing a dirndl. Um, it could also be used on other things, I'm sure. But a lot of instructions and things are in German, which I do not know how to speak German. Um, but I found some diagrams and stuff and I've that I've studied online, so I think I might be able to do it. These are the ribbon trims that I got, and I'm going to start with a pink one because the first trim I want to attempt is supposed to end up looking kind of like hearts, which is actually great for in time of Valentine's Day in February. These are kind of my notes on making the trim. So you sew these two dots together and then you sew into the top one and pull it and um, you're working from the back side of the ribbon. And then on the right side of the ribbon, it's supposed to look kind of like hearts. And if you hear a bell, that's because one of my cats is playing with the toy. Um, so you might just have to ignore that. But um, kind of terms that I searched for were ribbon smocking, um, fabric manipulation, ribbon manipulation. Um, I think the German name for the heart ribbon trim is this word. Um, I'm not going to attempt um, saying it because I'm probably going to butcher it if I do. So um, I believe that's the German name of this kind of trim. Um, or you could probably also just call it heart ribbon trim. Um, so I'm going to get started on attempting this. But first I'm going to prepare the ribbon by marking the ribbon on the back side. So, you basically start by marking two dots. Maybe I should bring those up a little bit. Uh, okay, I'm going to move them up here. So this will be the starting point. Um, and I am not certain on this thing, but I think you want the, dart, the dots spaced to be about the size of the width of the ribbon. I'm not really sure if that's correct. One um, th tutorial that I saw, I think, said to do it 2.5 centimeters apart, but I'm just going to attempt it this way. So my ribbon is 5 eighths of an inch. So one, two, three, four, five. Five little sections on this little measuring guide thingy. So I'm going to try to use that as my base measurement for the dots. So I'm going to put, line this up here, and then three, four, five. So I think I would put the third dot about right here. And hopefully this will end up making those heart points, but I'm just going to repeat this. So I'm going to bring this dot my cats are being crazy right now, I'm sorry. <laughs> but, so, from the one dot, go up one, two, three, four, five little segments. And then put those dots here. And then move those dots here. And then one, two, three, four, five. Do the singular dot. And these are just marking the points where you will be sewing. So I'm going to just continue this along the length of the ribbon because I think I want to end up doing the whole ribbon so I can use it on like a Valentine's tape of dress. So one, two, three, four, five. Oops, I was supposed to do the two dots. All right. One, two, three, four, five. Yep. All right. So I'm going to continue marking my ribbon like this, and then I'll come back. Okay, so I have a small section of the ribbon marked, and I just kind of want to try the trim out. So 
I'm gonna try, actually probably should have the knot on the back side. So I'm going to go through this dot, then the other dot, and those get sewn together. I probably should have gotten um, ribbon that was one inch thick, but I think they might have been out of it. So make sure this is secure. And then we're gonna go up to the singular dot that's marked on the ribbon. And you do a little, trying to make sure you can see it. Go up through that little dot. And then you pull it together. And it's supposed to make a heart shape on this side. So these are supposed to get connected together. And on the right side, it looks like this so far. And then you make a line up here and let's see I'm trying to figure out the best way to place my hands for the stitching so last time I started on this side okay well I probably have to go through this way so this thread stays in the back but do this and you're going to be keeping a line of the thread between them. I'm going to stitch this again to secure it and then I'm going to go through the singular dot. And then bring those points together. I'm a little bit fumbly because this is my first time attempting this, but... Okay, I might need to... Okay. <laughs> Let's secure this like this. And I'm going to do a little knot. Alrighty. So that should be secured. So this is what this looks like so far. It almost looks like um, calla lilies or something to me right now. Alright, so I'm just going to keep doing this. I'm sorry if I'm moving it too much. Um, maybe I should try to keep it the same way throughout. So I'm gonna hold this with my fingers. I'm gonna, well this thread, we want it to stay in the back. So I'm gonna go through this one, then this dot, secure those together again. I'm just like repeating this process. I hope that it's kind of clear to you. I studied diagrams and stuff a lot online just to kind of try to wrap my head around how it works. And then we're gonna go through the singular dot again. And then we're gonna pull that together And I'm going to secure it with a little knot. Right, and it 
looks like this now. I hope that was in the frame while I was doing that. I probably have to move this up a little bit. Okay, so it looks like this now. And now we repeat going from the first dot to the second dot. Secure those together. And then sew into the singular dot again. Did I do that one right? I don't know. All right, so. Let's secure this together. Yeah, so that's basically what I'm going to repeat for this whole trim. I think it might have gotten a little bit wonky on this one. <laughs> um, so I'm definitely going to need to practice this more. I think the first two turned out okay, maybe. But yeah, this is what the trim looks like so far. I'm going to do this for a bit longer and then I'll come back and show you what it looks like. So you're basically, if you need a description again, so you have the two dots, go through both of them, secure it together, and then you go up to this one and you pull those pieces together. So that's kind of uh, the description that I have for that. I'm probably not very good at explaining it. But I'm going to do this for a little bit longer and then come back. All right, so I taped this down because it gets kind of twisty. But this is what the trim looks like so far. Um, and I did mark down on this ribbon farther. And I'll probably end up turning this whole spool of ribbon into this trim so that I could use it for trim later. This is what it looks up like closer. And I actually really like what it looks like on the back side, honestly. Um, so if you turn it over and then, hold on. All right, so this is what the back of the trim ends up looking and I kind of like how even the back looks. So I wouldn't mind even trying this trim backwards. <laughs> I think it's kind of cute. Okay, so for now, um, this is what it looks like when it's not like straightened out. It kind of looks a little bit twisty, but I'm gonna move this trim to the side and work on another version. Okay, so for the next trim, I'm going to use this purple satin ribbon and um, for the pink ribbon, I'm planning on doing a Valentine's Day dress. And then I thought for the, the slight pastel purple, it would be nice to make a Tangled or Rapunzel themed dress and then use this trim for that. Um, I folded it just kind of beforehand to test out what it would look like. And I probably should have gone with a one inch wide ribbon, but I got this one. <laughs> um, I believe it's five eighths of an inch. Yeah, so this is five eighths of an inch. Um, so the first part is you make a little pleat and then I'm going to take a small, a small pin and I'm just gonna have that hold this pleat in place and the basic design is going to be you fold this pleat in half like this making a little triangle and then I also want to sew a small pearl just where those two edges meet 
And so it's going to make this cute little triangles along it. And all of the pleats, all of the pleats, <laughs> are going to go in the same direction. So, let's see. I'm going to make another pleat. I'm going to attempt to make these pleats about the same size. That looks close enough to me. So, maybe I should just add a little bit more. Maybe do. Maybe that. Is that too much? I guess it's not really even. I should probably go back. <laughs> okay, so you can just, you can either make like a small cardboard template or you can just be like me and try to eye it. <laughs> so I'm gonna... Alright. So you want these to be relatively even. I'm gonna take another pin. Focus! There we go. I'm gonna try to make these pleats relatively even and just pin them in place. Like that. I'm going to make a couple more. Anyways, I think it would be really cute to make a Rapunzel dirndl. So that's something on my list. I don't have any purple fabric at the moment though, so I might wait for this project, but I'll have the trim ready for it. So this is what I'm going to do for the whole length of the ribbon. I'm just going to pleat it and try to attempt them to make them all uniform. And like I said, you could make a little cardboard template so that all of your pleats will be exactly even. But uh, I'm just gonna kind of eye it. So this is what it looks like for the first section. I'm gonna go ahead and do this to the whole length of the ribbon and then I'll come back. finish pleating this entire spool of light pastel purpley ribbon so I think tomorrow I'll actually work on doing the next part which is turning these top corners in and then um, I'll probably also use little pearls at each little point um, so I think I'll do that tomorrow it is already dark and my back is a little sore, so I'm going to take a break um, and continue tomorrow. Okay, so it is the next day and now I'm going to try to finish up this purple ribbon. Last night I spent a lot of time working on the pink ribbon, but I find it very time consuming making the heart shaped pink ribbon just for reference. So I'm going to work on this one now and finish up doing it. So, um, I might have made the pleats too far apart, but the great thing about it is I would be the one making the mistake, uh, and not you if you guys try to make this. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. So, 
to finish up this trim, oh yeah, I definitely made the pleats too far apart, but I don't think it'll end up looking bad. Um, I'm gonna keep this like that, but let's go up to the middle here. Now, I haven't actually seen a video tutorial of this one done, so I don't know if I'm exactly doing it in the right steps, but I'm just bringing that corner down to the middle point, and then I'm going to do the same thing to this one, and I'm just going to try to make sure they lie kind of flat and even. And I'm going to bring this down into the middle and to secure those corners. Okay, I might not have done this exactly even. I'm going to hold this in place with my nail and just kind of secure it again. See if that helps hold it in place. I think that's close enough. And then I'm going to go through again and add a little pearl. So this is just a cheap plastic pearl that I probably got from Joann's or something a while ago. And there's the bead. There we go. Now the corner should look more like this. So I might, well, I actually am, not just might. I think I'm just going to kind of tack this down. Actually, I think I might do it to this point too. Now keep in mind, I have not watched a video tutorial on this. I just saw pictures. And um, I, then I folded it, a ribbon, to try to test out how to shape it, which is probably not the best way to try to make a tutorial. But um, yeah, I basically just look at a picture and then I try to mimic what I saw. So, I mean, um, the actual pictures that I saw, the next pleat was actually right up to this point. So on mine, there is more space in between each of these little triangle designs than there should have been for the original design. But um, I don't know, you can always change things up and just, you know, pretend like you meant to do that. So I think I'm gonna work on the next one now. Try to go into the middle area to bring this up. Make sure this is flat. I'm gonna get this corner and try to tack that down. And then I'm gonna come back up. Oops. There we go. And then I'm gonna take this corner and then tack that one down here. All right, so that one actually held a lot better than the first one. That's actually holding that top corner. So that's cool. And I'm going to go ahead and do another bead and where are you there you are and then I'm just going to secure that in place and it looks like this so far I'm gonna do a couple more and then probably come back and I also want to check the mail because I have a vintage 1950s pattern coming in that's supposed to be out for delivery and it's rainy and we keep getting hail, um, but maybe that's too much information. 
Um, yeah, so I'm going to take a little break because this video is going to end up being really long if I just kept it going. Focus, here we go. Alright, so here is what it looks like when I've done a couple more. Now in the photo, keep in mind that the next pleat in the photo that I'm actually trying to follow would have been closer up to the point of where this folded section ends. So the, it wasn't meant to have this space in between each one, but I don't mind it. I actually still like it the way it is. So I'm actually still really happy with this trim and I do like it and I'll probably use it for a tangle dress. Okay, so the next one that I'm going to try is they end up making sort of a rouged, a rouged ruffle kind of uh, trim. And uh, I saw a p photo similar to this on Pinterest, but I don't know who the photo belongs to, so I don't want to show it in the video. But I just kind of drew it out. And I didn't see the name of this one, but maybe mountain or uh, triangle bees. I don't know. I don't know what this one would be named, but... This is supposed to be called the Curved Stitched Ribbon Ruffle, and this is the Square Stitched Ribbon Ruffle. I think I'm going to try the uh, kind of V one. Um, I don't think I'm going to do all three because I don't think I got enough ribbon um, to try it. But I will try one of these, and they all sort of make like a, uh, when they're scrunched on the thread that you sew through it, the dotted line is supposed to be the thread. Um, and when you scrunch up the ribbon, it kind of makes a squiggly ruffle. So this is basically the diagram of those types. And this is probably the easiest of all of these to do and probably the quickest. Okay, so I don't have the best lighting at the moment because it is kind of dark and cloudy. But I'm going to get started on trying that kind of V-shaped ruffle. So I'm just going to weave the needle in and out in a straight line, diagonally. And then I'm going to go back down. And maybe I will try all three just so that we can kind of compare them. But I'm just going to do some of this real quick. Feel like it's easier to turn it um i'm left-handed so i feel like it's easier just to turn the ribbon around for the angle yeah so this is how i'm going to attempt doing this i'm going to do it along the ribbon until this thread runs out oh this is really dark sorry if this is dark and it's hard to see but this is what the ribbon looks like so far. I'm going to just continue doing this V shape um, until this thread runs out and then we'll gather it up and see what it looks like. <laughs> So I ended up doing all three of the trims that I had drawn. I just went ahead and decided to do all three just so that we could see for reference. So I'm bringing these closer. So the top one is like kind of like the V or mountain peak kind of looking straight lines. 
Um, the middle one is that curvy line that just kind of wiggles along. And then this third one is the square one that just kind of goes in a square pattern. So I'm going to scrunch these up and we'll see if um, there's a lot of difference. I personally think they're all going to look about the same, but uh, what we're going to do is gather this up and we'll see what it looks like. So, um, they all look pretty similar. The one that's squares is probably the more different, but they all look about the same. Um, and I think my favorite is probably this one, but I do think this is actually the longest piece that I did, so I had more to scrunch. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I think the V one I would actually do again because I do like this little rouging trim. Anyway, so that's what the three different gathered trims look like. All right, so I think testing out five um, different trims is a good number for one video. Um, so thank you for joining me and have a good day. Bye!